Hello, my name is Stephanie Craycroft Andrews. I am a clinical pharmacist with Community Care of Wake and Johnston Counties, one of 14 local networks of Community Care of North Carolina. Today, I will be discussing the STOP Act, the North Carolina Controlled Substance Reporting System, abbreviated as the NCCSRS, and the role of the dispensing pharmacist. The Strengthen Opioid Misuse Prevention Act of 2017, or STOP Act, is an update to previous laws regarding appropriate prescribing and dispensing of controlled substances in North Carolina. The STOP Act was recently passed on June 29, 2017 by the North Carolina General Assembly and signed into law by the North Carolina Governor. This was in response to the substantial impact of the nationwide opioid epidemic on the state of North Carolina. After viewing this presentation, pharmacists should be able to describe North Carolina pharmacists' roles and responsibilities outlined in the STOP Act, recognize specific red flags that may indicate that a patient is at risk for opioid misuse and or opioid-induced respiratory depression, as there can be significant risk even in the absence of misuse and also be able to interpret CSRS data in order to identify the presence of such red flags. Before moving forward, I will define a recurring phrase in the STOP Act, targeted controlled substances. During this presentation and within the context of the STOP Act, targeted controlled substances refers to Schedule II or III controlled substances that contain opioids or opioid derivatives, either alone, such as plain oxycodone, or in a combination product, such as oxycodone plus acetaminophen, the generic for Percocet. A complete list of included substances may be found on the North Carolina Board of Pharmacy's website, shown here. The STOP Act includes a timeline of key dates for implementation of the STOP Act requirements. Some of these requirements refer to the responsibility of prescribers, while others are the responsibility of dispensers. Dispensers are not required to verify a prescriber's adherence to the STOP Act or to the quantity limits for acute fills. Therefore, the pharmacist's responsibilities are narrowed down to just three key points. First, as of September 1 of 2017, pharmacies are required to report certain data in a timely manner to the North Carolina CSRS. Second, registering for access to the CSRS is required for 2018 pharmacist license renewal in North Carolina. And lastly, reviewing a patient's profile in the CSRS prior to dispensing is required in certain circumstances. Let's take a closer look at each of the three pharmacist roles required by the STOP Act. Again, starting on September 1st of 2017, pharmacies are now required to report all controlled substances dispensed to the CSRS no later than the close of the next business day after dispensing, but are encouraged to report this information within 24 hours of dispensing. This rule applies to all controlled substances, not just opioid derivatives or targeted controlled substances. The STOP Act also authorizes the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services to fine pharmacies who do not comply with this rule. As you can see from the list presented here, Information required to be reported by a dispenser includes information regarding the dispensing pharmacy's DEA number, the patient's name, address, phone number, and date of birth, the date the prescription was written, the date it was filled, the prescription number, whether it is a new prescription or a refill, the quantity and day supply, the prescriber's DEA number, and the method of payment. Later, I'll demonstrate how having these different pieces of information can aid a pharmacist in identifying if filling a prescription may increase patient risk. The second major responsibility of pharmacists outlined in the STOP Act is to register with the North Carolina Controlled Substance Reporting System. Most pharmacists are required to register for access to the CSRS within 30 days after obtaining an initial or renewal license to practice pharmacy in North Carolina starting in the year 2018. If a pharmacist does not register with the CSRS, then he or she must attest that he or she is exempt. A pharmacist may be exempt 
if employed in a pharmacy practice setting where a Schedule II, III, or IV controlled substance will not be dispensed. The third major pharmacist role outlined in the STOP Act is the requirement to review a patient-specific CSRS report for the last 12 months of data prior to dispensing a targeted controlled substance. CSRS data shall be reviewed when a red flag exists. A red flag is present if one, the dispenser has reason to believe that the ultimate user may be seeking a targeted controlled substance for any reason other than the treatment of a medical condition. Two, the prescriber practices outside of the usual geographic area served by the dispenser. Three, the patient resides outside of the usual geographic area served by the dispenser. Four, the patient pays for the prescription with cash especially when the patient has prescription insurance on file with the pharmacy. Or five, the patient demonstrates potential misuse of a controlled substance. I'll discuss ways in which a patient might demonstrate potential misuse on the next slide in more detail. The last red flag I mentioned may need a bit more explanation. Potential misuse can be demonstrated by overutilization of the controlled substance, requests for early refills, utilization of multiple prescribers, an appearance of being overly sedated or intoxicated upon presenting a prescription, or a request made by an unfamiliar patient for an opioid drug by a specific name, street name, pill color, or identifying marks. Without reviewing the CSRS, assessment of overutilization or use of multiple prescribers is limited to prescriptions filled with a specific pharmacy. If one or more red flags have been identified, the STOP Act states that a CSRS report should be reviewed. Review of the CSRS can further assist in confirming the presence of red flags indicating potential risk. Here we see CSRS search results for a patient. I recommend searching by patient's last name, the first letter only of their first name, and date of birth. This can help to make sure that all patient profiles are identified in the search as patients often have several addresses listed or may be listed under more than one version of their first name, such as being listed under the first name of Joe, Joey, and Joseph. Several red flags can be identified from search results, including patient demographics at the top, especially address, to identify if the patient resides outside of the typical geographic area served by a pharmacy. You can also see prescriber demographics to evaluate if the patient has received prescriptions from multiple prescribers or prescribers well outside of the usual geographic area served by a pharmacy. Remember that the CSRS contains data from all controlled substance fills, not just opioids. While it is not a red flag specified by the STOP Act, filling targeted controlled substances in addition to other centrally acting depressants can increase the risk of opioid-induced respiratory depression. In fact, a black box warning exists for the concomitant use of opioids with benzodiazepines. Payment method is identified by a code on the right-hand side, and a key is located at the bottom of the search results page. This is where we can see if a patient has paid for their controlled medications using cash, insurance, or a combination of the two. Again, cash payments can be a red flag according to the STOP Act, especially if a patient has insurance. While it's not a red flag specified by the STOP Act, it is worth mentioning that the CSRS can also calculate the daily morphine equivalent dose of an opioid prescription. Higher doses indicate an increased risk of respiratory depression. After reviewing search results, a printable report can be generated by clicking the Generate PDF button on the bottom left of the screen. Generating a report is another effective way to evaluate potential signs of misuse, including overuse, by adding up the day's supply over a period of time. For example, if a patient received a total of a 375 days of opioids or opiate derivatives over one year or 365 days, a dispenser would conclude that the patient is overusing the medication. Generating a report is also an efficient way to determine the number of providers a patient has received controlled substance prescriptions from. 
Typically, a list of DEA numbers associated with each prescription would be seen where indicated by the red circle. As an example, if there were 11 unique prescriber DEA numbers associated with a controlled substance prescribed to this patient, then that would be a red flag. At the end of the report, you'll see where each prescriber practices, whether it be a private practice or a hospital's emergency department. By using the report, a dispenser can also determine the number of pharmacies the patient has received controlled prescriptions from, as well as the location of those pharmacies. This allows a dispenser to see the total quantity, day supply, and frequency of controlled medications filled at any outpatient pharmacy in the state of North Carolina, not just at his or her own pharmacy. For additional resources on the STOP Act, such as the pharmacist-centric guidance issued by the North Carolina Board of Pharmacy, or the free tutorial by the UNC Eshelman School of Pharmacy on more specifically how to use the North Carolina Controlled Substance Reporting System, please take a moment to make note of these helpful websites. Pharmacists play an important role in helping curb the misuse of opioid medications. You should now be able to describe pharmacists' roles and responsibilities outlined in the STOP Act, recognize specific red flags that may indicate that a patient is at risk, and interpret CSRS data in order to identify the presence of those red flags. Thank you.